Hello, beautiful bookish family. Welcome or welcome back to Coffee Over Apples. My name is Steph. Today I have a very polarizing gush slash rant for the book that I finished very recently, Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. Now, I am going to go non-spoilery and then spoilery, but a majority of the stuff that I want to say is going to be in the spoiler section. I don't know how long this video is going to be. I'm just gonna ramble. You grab a snack and sit tight because this is a very popular science fiction book from 2021. It won like good Reach Choice Awards. It won so many awards. I'm pretty sure it's going to be adapted into a movie because it feels like it's been written for the screen. But um, I got some issues. I have some issues. So much so that I originally rated this four stars and I'm considering knocking it down to either a three or 3.5 because the longer I sit with it, the more something just doesn't feel right. I could change the world. I'm Leo. All right, giving you the gist of this in the non-spoiler section first, There's a reason that not much is told to you on the back of the book because even understanding what the thematic uh, subgenres of science fiction that this is is going to be very spoilery. So essentially, we're following Rylan Grace, who is an astronaut and woke up in space in a pod. The other people who were in pods next to him are all dead. He doesn't know what he's doing there. He's trying to figure it out. There's a lot of flashbacks. The world is at stake. Everything is resting on his shoulders for him to figure out how to stop the dimming of the sun. Okay. Um, listen, I don't think Andy Weir knows how to write people. The strong suit of this book and the reason why I believe it's so popular and partly the reason why I originally I really liked it is because it's so easily readable. It's so streamlined and trope heavy and stereotypical that all of the magic in here comes from the science. It comes from the biology. It comes from the chemistry. It comes from the physics. So even if you're somebody who is not a scientist or has a science background, this is easily digestible for you. Everything is broken down. It's very plot heavy. This is a plot driven book. And I typically define myself as a plot driven reader. So I was eating this up like candy. As we're going along, our main character is explaining why they're doing what they're doing, how these uh, equations function, how it is that the experiments that they're doing work, and why it's the only alternative or what other situations there could be. So there's a lot of time in this book that is spent justifying itself, meaning I felt really comfortable like after the first couple experiments, I mean, trying to think about using the bit of science knowledge that I have being a science buff and having taken some physics classes in undergrad, which was like eight years ago or something at this point. So God, if I can remember what that was like, um, but at a certain point, there's just so much science that unless you're really going to sit there and research and look into every single thing, it becomes pretty evident that, okay, the science here is pretty solid up to a majoritively believable degree, even though considering that we're in space, we're on a mission to another solar system and all these things are happening and there's so many hypotheticals, but I'm like, all right, I get it. I trust you. You've backed it up. I'm not even going to keep questioning it anymore. So whether you want to dive deep into the plausibility of the science in here or not, I think that it's, it's fine. Um, so 
the latter half of this book, I feel like it could have been a bit shorter because the last like 50 pages, they read like a conversation between Andy Weir and their editor where someone found loopholes and he was trying to plug in those loopholes. So, okay, I was like, I get it. You're plugging in your loopholes. Fine. The science is solid. All right, moving on to the next thing. But I really enjoyed that aspect. I love learning about the science. It sent me down rabbit holes of studying neutrinos and relativity and all these amazing things, which are great, right? So I learned a lot while reading this book because it brought me to wanting to research other things. Fine. When it comes to characters, people are so poorly written. And that's the part that is sitting with me that I don't feel comfortable with. Now, how do I say this? Mm, okay. How do I say this without ruining anything? Andy Weir is a white male and it reads like a white male. That being that the main character feels like a reflection of the author and someone in the discord brought up that point and I'm sticking with it because that makes total sense to me because this main character is easily interchangeable with the main character from The Martian. If you've read The Martian also by Andy Weir which is like super popular, um, they are both almost one and the same person and they have no personality. They're just the driest people. I mean, if you asked me to pick them out of a crowd, I probably couldn't because they're just that bland. There's no description other than they are a cis white male. So from that, every other person that was written in this book is also from a very stereotypical place. So. I don't think this is spoilery, so I'm actually going to talk about this here. And here are the problems, major problem. Here's one of the major problems that I had in this book that is not a spoiler. I'm going to talk about the different characters being the other astronauts and other teams who are also dealing with things. I'm not going to yet say what those things are, but also the woman who is in charge of all of the plans to put this team together for what they were doing. The Russian astronaut was addicted to alcohol. Stereotypical portrayal of a Russian person just can't live without alcohol. Fine. The woman who was in power was power hungry and had dark and or morally gray ethics, was on a power trip and their power was used as a means of discussing whether that is a cause of their gender. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Why is it we couldn't have a female lead character, high in government, high in military, with multiple degrees, that doesn't have implicit bias and that doesn't reinforce the same misogynistic systems that are preventing women from garnering these positions in the first place. Because our woman said things about how certain people on exploratory teams have to be heterosexual males because otherwise you risk fraternizing and you risk the mission? No, absolutely not. Completely disregarding any kind of LGBTQIA representation and I'm also going to get into that later in the spoiler section because that happens again later on with our main character. Um, but also that not trusting that people can be professionals and kind of insinuating that women poison any expedition or kind of professional place by bringing in emotions and sex and are not able to conduct themselves in a professional manner. That's kind of gross. 
that she would insinuate that and just because our main character had a short one-line retort against that does not mean that the author was subverting that by any means. So here's the other character that I had a serious problem with. The Asian character is like stoic, quiet, only speaks when they have something to say stereotypical quiet Asian TV personality so again reinforcing these specific tropes there's another white male character who talks a lot about the Beatles I think it was the Beatles um so and is also a bit more aggressive in their manner in speaking with the main character so Again, reinforcing a stereotypical white male trope. And then, and then, there is the one black guy, the one black character, and there is a scene in which our main character is talking to the woman that is in power. And she says the misogynistic thing that she says about having opposite sexes on missions and our main character makes a comment i can't remember what the exact words were and i didn't tab it and that's a mistake that i should have made i should have been tabbing this as i went along but um says something about like if you act that way about this then what are you going to insinuate that because this person is black that they automatically like like basketball and listen to rap and things of this nature which means that the author, Andy Weir, is conscious of stereotypes and therefore has tried, I wonder what, tried in double quotations because to me, if I could do triple quotations, wait, eh, 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 like quadruple quotations, um, the only black character makes an appearance and they have absolutely zero personality so we're allowed to see a stereotype of multiple other ethnicities and nationalities but in order to in order to be safe don't give the black guy any kind of personality because if you did then the only kind of personality he'd be able to have would be a stereotypical black guy how would he be authentic like no that's just no i'm sorry andy weir no that's that's not it um so he has no personality everyone else has some semblance of some personality but our one black person has no personality because it would be too dangerous to give him a personality because black people can only be successful if they have no personality like that's what I got from this and that made me feel uncomfortable so hence why I'm dropping two stars um now was that a major portion of the book no not at all actually that was like a very small portion of the book but when I move into spoilers there's other things that come up that feel like a perpetuation of the author's ideologies so if you love science, you will love this book. If you love plots, you will love this book. If you love zero character development, you will love this book. I'm realizing about myself that there is no amount of plot that can justify zero character development unless, unless there are certain situations in which it is justified um and I will not go into that in this video there are I think other situations in which it is justified that there's very zero character development because that is the focus of the story but that was not the focus of the story I think they were just scared to write character development because they don't know how to write characters that is my opinion sorry Andy Weir but that's how it reads the last thing I'm going to say in this non-spoilery section is um, 
you know, I understand why everyone loves this because it's so fast paced and it's easy to get lost in the like volume and gravity of what's going to happen if this mission doesn't succeed. But it's Andy Weir. So if you've read Andy Weir's other books, then you kind of know what's going to happen at the end because there's a ton of conveniences in here. And honestly, I am going to say sometimes I do like things that are just like really easy to read. And because of that, it's not the conveniences in here that bother me so much. Like they do bother me that everything was so perfect. It does. I would say on a scale of one to 10, I'm bothered at like a three because I don't like convenience, but I already had the expectation that everything was going to turn out the way that it did. So, you know, take that as you will. Um, but I am now going to move into full spoilers because that's all I have to say for non-spoilers. There's so much here that I want to talk about and I can't talk about any more of the plot without giving it away. I say expect this to be a movie. But moving into full spoilers. All right. Here's the thing. Um, so let's talk about the teacherness for a second. Um, I'm a teacher and the representation of what it takes to be a teacher that has come up in Andy Weir's writing, I don't like because he's insinuating again, a societal norm or societal understanding that if you suck at your profession, just be a teacher. That's such an easy backfall career. Do you know how insulting that is to people who actually studied and got a degree directly in line to become a teacher? It's insinuating that those people, such as me, have no aspirations and are not actually professionals in our field. You must have a degree in your specified subject area in order to get a license or secondary degree to become a teacher. And a good portion of teachers are practicing professionals. And I don't even like that terminology in itself because it's insinuating that teachers who do not have a other platform or side career that is related to their subject area of knowledge are not professionals in practice. And that's not true either. Like math teachers are mathematicians. English teachers are writers, are readers, are critics. I'm an artist. No, no, no. So the fact that our main character gave up his scientific research because of the fact that he got salty, that people didn't like his paper and said, I'll just go be a teacher. You know what? I'm going to put this book down. It is heavy. Um, the fact that he got salty bothers me because all of a sudden he's a teacher and everything's fine and it's sweet and we're happy and the kids are great and like everything's perfect and his life is great um it is a very hard profession no no i don't like that um it is not giving teachers any kind of agency or credit for the vastly underpaid work that we do that's a story for another day i digress in the story, he is speaking to the, like, he's speaking to the main person, um, the woman Strata, who is the head honcho that I spoke about in the uh, non-spoiler section. And first of all, he's like whisked away from his classroom, the FBI or the CIA or some government agency comes and grabs him from his classroom to pull him out to go become a work in the lab. And it's like, like he's being rescued, like he's being rescued from being a teacher and he's actually being able to put his skills to use. And that is insulting in and of itself. But when he's talking to Strat, 
Strat says something to him along the lines of, oh, well, did you really think that I brought you here because you're a teacher? I brought you here because of your knowledge. And he goes, oh, he's not even going to back up the profession or back up his colleagues. He's not going to speak up for himself. Um, so he is also showing implicit bias against the profession and against his colleagues. Fine. At the end of the book, he actually ends up becoming a teacher to baby aliens, which is like, that was so cute. I'm not gonna lie. That scene was adorable. But now it's supposed to be sweet again that he's a teacher because he saved the world. And now he's settling down because teacher equals settling. Anywhere you are trying my patience um but but this video is actually turning into a rant video i'm starting to really wonder if i even want to give this a three star i have to because i'm i would be lying if i said i didn't have fun i had so much fun with the science this is a first contact with aliens book <sighs> on multiple levels it's first contact with aliens because we have the astrophage, which is the amoeba, like infectious alien interstellar traveling amoeba that is infecting our sun. There are multiple stars that are infected, but the only one within vision that is not affected or within range of infection that is not affected or doesn't seem to be infected is Tau Seti. So he is sent with a crew to Tau Seti to investigate why. And when he gets there, he also meets another alien race who also sent explorers there to figure out why. And they're working together to find out what is keeping that star from being infected. Turns out that it is. And actually there is a natural predator that lives off of eating the astrophage amoeba that are living off of eating from planets that have co2 and transferring that to use to get energy from the sun so they have like this whole life cycle so he needs to go there figure out what the natural predators need to survive and how to utilize them back on earth because venus is the co2 factory for the astrophage in our solar system incredible plot incredible plot incredible science I can't speak to it because I have nothing to say like it was good it was well thought out what gets me on the convenience aspect of it is the plausibility because there were so many situations in which he is the superhero he is the white male savior genius who has settled but now has been rescued from his settling in order to save mankind with his man genius and his vast knowledge and jack of all trades skill set because not only is he good at biology but he's also good at physics and he's also good at chemistry and he's majoritively good at engineering even though he keeps saying that he's not good at engineering but he keeps engineering stuff up the butt like listen it's he's good at everything so because he's good at everything he cannot fail and so there comes the convenience that everything works out perfectly for him even though there are multiple occasions in which there's no way he should have been able to do that simply because if you think about how many tests and trial runs it takes with large groups of scientists to work out all exponential opportunities for malfunction during test runs and he gets it on the first try not only on the first try and yes, he has alien help, but he's able to use his vast chemistry knowledge to understand xenonite, which is, or xenonite, or whatever you want to call it, 
which is an alien manufactured metal made from a noble gas which should technically not be able to be reconstructed into other materials. <sighs> like, okay, I can suspend belief that we are using xenon, using alien technology to do something, but the, the fact that he doesn't understand how the xenon is transferable, yet he's able to work through the chemistry to understand how the xenonite is malfunctioning, mm, that's a little bit of a stretch for me. So, yeah, but other than that, Rocky stole the show. Rocky was the alien, the spider-like, crustaceous, alien-looking thing that is so sweet and is working with um, our main character, Grace, to figure out how to encapsulate and breed the predator amoebas of the astrophage and bring it back to their planet however what's unique in this situation is that usually when there's a first contact with aliens it ends up being that the humans are the lesser evolved species and the other aliens have come to us in some form or fashion and are either communicating with us or sharing information with us or trying to save us or providing us with technology but in this case it is the humans that are providing the technology because the humans are the advanced race and because of this it is how rocky has ended up in the situation where he's alone because everyone with him died because they were exposed to space radiation because he doesn't understand radiation they built their ships in a hurry in order to go and figure out what was happening on tau ceti so we are the advanced species in this case. And I thought that was extremely interesting. I loved that aspect in the book, which I was writing on this like natural high of being so happy that I was enjoying the science. Like to me, the perfect science fiction has just like tell me everything i want to know where the nuts and bolts go i want to understand why the axle's turning in that direction i want to understand the equations and the chemistry i want to understand why you made the decisions that you made walk me through like i'm 12 which is fine because i want to learn i love it to me that is the candy in this book and that is why i initially gave it four stars but let's talk about rocky Let's talk about Rocky's well-being and let's revisit what I said earlier about the LGBTQIA plus representation here um, and the double downing of stereotypes. So Rocky doesn't have a gender. Rocky's civilization doesn't have gender. Um, they actually reproduce, I believe, not asexually, but all creatures in their species are hermaphrodites so they each produce eggs and then those eggs are brought together and those eggs kind of um, go through a process of fusing and evolving into a new rocky being but our main character places a pronoun of he onto rocky before they understand what Rocky's gender is, or if Rocky has gender, or what their sexual functions are. <sighs> oh, Andy Weir, why did you do this? All right, so this is like when he first meets Rocky. Our main character, Grace, sees Rocky and automatically starts referring to Rocky as he. They acknowledge that they don't know what Rocky's gender is, or if they have a gender, and um, just says, no, they look like a he. So they go on saying that until they actually learn in a very short amount of time, by the way, how Rocky's people communicate by learning their language in a format that's very similar to Arrival, if you've seen that movie, amazing movie. Um, and then once they learn about Rocky's culture, which we know that culture is important to Rocky because Rocky and Grace are both on the same wavelength, that cultures should be respected. They go out of their way to 
respect each other's cultures and once they tell each other that what they're doing right now is a cultural norm it is no longer in question the other is expected to respect that and that is a mutual respect but our only human communication decides to on our behalf insinuate that all people are provided a gender by the person who they are in conversation with and so after learning that rocky doesn't have a gender instead of referring to them as they they say no i'm still gonna call him he and i don't like that um there was no rhyme there was no reason and being that this is the only human that these aliens will come in contact they are getting a very biased opinion as to what earth culture is actually like um or needs fixing hopefully with the wikipedia drive that grace gave them to understand earth science and about the earth and culture and everything else hopefully hopefully the aliens learn through wikipedia that you should not project your own gender biases upon the person in which you are in conversation with done um so those are my thoughts about project Hail mary by andy weir i'm gonna try to hold this up again even though it is a heavy book it is like 500 pages it did not need to be this long it didn't need to um so I'm like so torn because if there were no humans, if we didn't have any flashbacks in here, this would have been so much better. It would have been great. It would have been 300 pages of scientific alien bliss, but we have to follow Grace. If you have similar thoughts or you have different thoughts, let me know. I'm so sorry that when I do a review, it usually ends up being in like a ranty fashion, but it's easier for me to talk about the things that didn't work. Let's talk about what did work in here because the things that did work were just like, cool, science, love it. Um, aliens, beautiful descriptions, plausible, great. The way that people act, not so great. If you want to support my channel, there is a Kofi where you can buy me a cup of coffee to say thank you for the content that I create. The Interstellar Book Club, which is the sci-fi book club that I host along with a couple friends, is available in the description box below with a link to the Discord, Twitter, and the channel of all the other hosts. We read a different science book every month and this was the selection for March. If you would like to join us for next month's election, please definitely join us by clicking on the links below. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you later. Bye! What's the make you, Mr. Wonka? Mr. Wonka worked the factory. In your wildest, wildest dreams, you could not deny.